Now, uh, we have uh, four of these events scheduled uh, in, a, in an attempt to try to hold a little bit more of an open dialogue with the community. Um, we're going to have two parts to our evenings. The first will be sort of a plan highlighting uh, our programs tonight, uh, particularly fine performing arts as well as athletics. Uh, and then in the second part, anybody wants to stick around, uh, we can discuss anything you'd like to discuss. It will be an open dialogue. And of course, I'll try to do my best to answer any questions you may or may not have. Uh, I'm introducing tonight first Dave Lagamba, who is our athletic director. Uh, and we'll take it from here. And also, we're live uh, streaming. So if anybody yeah. couldn't come on and ask about the team, have them uh, take a look at the camera. Yeah. Let me keep one. Good evening, everyone. Um, Dr. Dettel, thank you for inviting myself here and uh, Mr. Hartman. I know uh, Mr. Hawkman and Noah and Henry Hartman for uh, the years we've been together. We're both very proud of our the program that we each run. Uh, we both uh, feel that this program are very successful and uh, something that really highlights our, our district. Um, I'm going to do the fine performing arts right after I'm done, and uh, I have, uh, I'm have going to do the athletic portion now. What I just handed around, I just handed it out uh, with something that, to commemorate our um, state championship football team, and then the um, the second thing that I handed out was our, they were our all-star for the fall season and the winter sports season. Um, and I'll touch base on them as I go through the program. Something is going on with the PowerPoint, so Henry's going to help me. We're just going to kind of scroll through it. Um, I can't do it as a slideshow for some reason, whatever reason, but trust me, what I'm telling you is up there is up there. Um, district administration uh, from our board members um, on, and um, let me see here. I have, we have uh, Lisa Santiago, Mike Baby, Kim Carty, Bruce Cooper, Connie Johnson, Bob McQuaid, uh, Joe Petitone, Mike Wilden, Brianna Wilson, and Carol Pirelli um, from the Commercial Township. And our district administration here, our superintendent, Dr. David Gentile, assistant superintendent, Dr. Pam Moore, uh, Donna Myers, and our solicitor, Honor Robinson. Uh, Without this group here, uh, we're, we're not the successful group that we are as far as the athletic department goes in our athletic programs. They're a very supportive bunch and we appreciate everything that they do for us. Um, scrolling on to the next page here, it's just a little bit about the athletic department information. Um, so, you know, like, you know, our nickname is, uh, you know, the Thunderbolts. Uh, our school colors are orange and blue. 22, uh, 22 athletic programs, 23 if we split up the winter track programs into boys and girls, uh, which gives our, our students at Noble High School a lot of opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities. Um, I think in the fall season alone, we had about 350 student athletes or students come out for our programs, which is pretty tremendous. If I were to tell you like winter track, just if I were to label winter track, we had about 115 kids out just for the one program. Um, so that just goes to show you like with our 22 programs at 23, we split it up into boys and girls winter track. You know, I'd like to thank Stephanie Gross as our building principal, uh, Rich Andrews, my assistant athletic director, Danny Richter, who's our athletic trainer, does a superb job, and Holly Mann, my secretary. Uh, we have a couple of social media outlets that you can uh, follow us on um, to stay up to date if you're interested. Uh, one, our, our scheduling website is www.cakeatlanticleague.org, um, and that is right on our athletic homepage. Uh, but that's a great way to stay on top of what's coming or what, what sporting events are here. So if you're interested in coming out to support the kids, uh, you can stay on top of it by following CapeAtlanticLeague.org. We have a Twitter account, www.twitter.com backslash Athletics. Uh, I do my best to uh, tweet out information on all of our programs and all the accomplishments that kids are doing. Um, if you're not interested, if you're not into Twitter right now, just let me give you a brief one down. Twitter is an excellent way to stay on top of what's going on um in the world today uh twitter is a really good social media outlet and i can tell you just from the athletic uh from our athletic programs i hear a lot of people uh, not not just complimenting not complimenting our athletic 
Twitter account, but my coaches have Twitter accounts too. And I hear a lot of people, you know, it's men and men for doing that because it helps them to stay on top of, you know, what's coming up ne next for the respective sports that we offer. Business page for we're working on just staying a little more on top of that, but that's facebook.com backslash Noble High School Athletics. Uh, next time. Um, fall sports, eight programs there, boys cross country, girls cross country, boys soccer, girls soccer, girls tennis, field hockey, ball, ball cheerleading, and football. Um, I have uh, outstanding coaches that are very dedicated and, you know, as far as uh, the, the knowledge that they have to the sport that they bring, but here, the, the more, more importantly, it's not just the knowledge that they bring to the sports, it's the knowledge they have about dealing with and coaching kids. And I think that's why our numbers are so high when we when I talk about participation rate. And I have to tell you, that's one of the things, there, there's several things that I'm really proud of for our athletic program, and if I repeat it, it's because I'm so proud of our, our, our department. But the, the, the winning championships and winning games, that's up there, but that's not on the high end of the scale. The, particip the participation rate, the number of kids coming out for our program is something that we're very proud of. Um, sportsmanship, another thing that we're very proud of. In the fall season, zero disqualifications uh, from any of our coaches and players. And, you know, it's something that you, you almost expect. But I have to tell you, when you look at other high schools, it's not, it doesn't seem to be. Um, I know from, from our standpoint, we expect zero disqualifications from the kids and students and coaches. Um, but it seems like we may be, you know, that rare entity because it doesn't happen at every school district. Um, and I know that's at least two in a row. I'll bring up something um, when I get to the after the spring. But here's our winter sports programs. We have seven sports in winter for the kids to participate in. Boys basketball, girls basketball, boys swimming and girls swimming. Winter track, which I mentioned. Uh, winter track, 115 kids, somewhere around there. We actually split that up and my, coach, my head coach, Rafael right? Craig. Actually runs a winter boys program and a winter girls program simultaneously. So it's actually having eight, it's almost like having eight sport programs in the winter season, which is uh, great. We have winter uh, winter cheerleading and wrestling. Uh, once again, the participation that we're looking for, the competitiveness, uh, but you know, doing things in the right way is something that we look forward to. Also, once again, zero disqualifications this past uh, winter season, the spring sports season. Uh, another another season we have seven sports. Spring just starting up. Uh, boys track and field, girls track and field, baseball, softball, boys tennis, lacrosse, and golf. And I'll tell you at the end of this at the end of this season, I'm hoping that I can tell you we had zero disqualifications. What I can tell you is that last year for spring we had zero disqualifications. Zero disqualifications for the entire uh, year. Our school was actually honored by from the NJSIA this past year. We won the um, we were honored with the NJSIAA sportsmanship banner, which uh, we're very proud of for this season. Um, I'm going to bring our banners. I'm proud of it, and I know our coaches are. And what I like to say about the, um, these banners, these yellow banners, and I kind of get teased a little bit, I guess, because I always like to brag about all the banners that are hanging up in Millville High School. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, the conference championships, the state championships. But the banners that I know I'm most proud of are these yellow banners. They're the sportsmanship banners. They're the banners that say, your school, your athletes know how to go out there, compete at a high level, but they do it in the right way. And that's the most important thing to me and my coaches and the student athletes meetings prior to the season to discuss uh, a sports mission and doing things in the right way at the, at the beginning of every season, uh, meeting with every student athlete, every team to discuss sportsmanship, doing things the right way in school, on the athletic field, and then uh, once again, when they're not with us, in the, you know, uh, we, we know that high school students are going to do high school things, and when we try to tell the students, if you find yourself in an area or in an undesirable position, remove yourself from that situation. Think about doing the right thing, and just think about being a Millville High School student athlete. Um, keep going. Um, our mission statement is real simple. We're, we're here to provide a meaningful and educational opportunity for our student athletes. All right, and we think we do that. Um, we do that through sports. We get the you know we. We promote doing things the right way. We promote, you know, doing living a clean lifestyle. No alcohol, no drugs, no tobacco, uh, no involvement with the police unless it's something involved with the Pink Police Athletic League. Um, so, you know, staying out of trouble. Uh, you know, we we tell our student athletes, you know, they might they might not like it at first, but I think when they come to graduate, they do that. We like to hold our student athletes higher than we're going to hold any other student. And if they, you know, and that's what we expect from our student athletes. 
Um, our highlights through the fall. Um, this past fall, eight sports teams and seven of them, seven of those sports teams were eligible for uh, for playoffs. So all seven made the playoffs, which is pretty incredible. Like I said, uh, we had about 350 student athletes out there, which is uh, really nice. Uh, I'll get to that second little in a second. Uh, we had a we recently had a signing for a young lady that's going on to Rowan College, and this is uh, this this was one of our first that I, I can tell you that uh, she's one of our uh, Abby Dago, um, one you know an outstanding student at Global High School, but an outstanding student athlete. She'll be going to Rowan College and she'll be um, participating in two um, athletic programs at Rowan College: women's soccer and women's women's lacrosse. You know, one of the things I, I get back as far as the feedback comes from the, the students that participate in our athletic programs is that. That's, that's being around and sticking around in sports, helped them develop friendships, the social aspect of high school, and it also motivated them to, to, to do well in, in their classes and do well in school and then to go off and do bigger and better things. You know, as far as the, the things that we try to teach them, um, as far as, you know, showing up for practice on time, you know, fulfilling your obligation, working as a team, those are all the lifelong skills that they're getting from our athletic programs. When I see a young lady like this, and I know, uh, you know, she's going to succeed whether she plays sports or not. But when I see a young lady like this and um, the, the soccer programs that we have here at Millville and, um, you know, succeeded at the high school level and, and will be succeeding at the at the collegiate level. I'm, I'm very proud of students like this and uh, the rest of the 349, the other 349 athletes that came out. We had eight first team Cape Atlantic League All-Stars. I gave you a packet that, gave, uh, that talked about our fall All-Stars and our winter All-Stars. And you can check that out. Um, so please check that out if you get a chance, and um, it'll tell you. The, and when I say eight first team, but if you can check out the number of second team all stars that we had and the number of honorable mentions, uh, we're very proud of every all the accomplishments that our student athletes had. This past weekend, one of our football players was honored uh, for making all state. Uh, this past Sunday, yesterday, uh, Zach Douglas and our head football coach, which I didn't mention, I don't have it on here, but he was actually honored twice yesterday. Uh, for being selected as Coach of the Year by two different organizations, one by the New Jersey Football Coaches Association, and the next one was the National Football Foundation. Um, so to be selected as Coach of the Year by both of those organizations and to be honored on the same day, which he made both of those events, um, I happened to see him at the second event, which, uh, which is pretty pretty incredible. And it's a great, I don't know, it's just something that's great, just great publicity for our athletic department and for Millville, the Millville Public School System in all. Qualification. You'll hear me say that a lot because I'm proud of that. That's something that I know that I I really you know talk to and enforce upon my coaches and the kids, and I know that the coaches enforce it. And I also love when I see the kids enforce it. You know, after losing a tough game, but still clapping, going over there and shaking hands with their opponents. That's something I'm really really proud of because that's that's not easy uh, to to lose a close competition and have to get up and say you know what. Congratulations on defeating us. You were the better team this day, but we're proud of that. Uh, winter highlights. Um, boys and, our boys and girls basketball team about five or six years ago were really uh, not doing so well. I'll leave it at that. Uh, this past year, um, both teams made the playoffs. Our girls basketball team won a conference title for the first time in 23 years, which is very impressive. Um, both teams made the um, tournament, which uh, is, a, is a very difficult thing to do. And, in the league that we're in. Um, as far as wrestling, swimming, and winter track, those are programs that have an opportunity to, you know, there's a team aspect, but there's also that individual aspect. And we had a lot of success with those three programs individually. Three of our wrestlers are on the spot at the regional tournament, which is more or less like a sectional type tournament. Um, and, well, you know, and, and for our swimming, uh, we have a couple of swimmers that made it to the state tournament. One of our swimmers, Paul uh, Renshaw, was a sophomore, finished fourth, and, and I believe it was the 50 yard. And our senior, Sam Casaboon, finished eighth in his uh, event. I mean, we, we have a lot of kids that are doing really well individually, uh, not just from a team aspect. Uh, recently had a signing for the first time for girls basketball. Gregoriana Jones will be going off to play women's basketball. And over the next four years, she'll be getting $65,000 to go to co the College of St. Joseph's, which is pretty impressive. Um, for first team, Cape Atlantic League All-Stars, you can check out. You can also see the number of second teamers. And once again, at the bottom, zero disqualifications. Like I said, very proud of that little stat right there.
um, 26 stand spring highlights. Unfortunately, the spring just started. We actually just started some. <laughs> we were supposed to start some preseason games last year, but the weather prevented us from doing so. So we uh, the preseason games today. Um, come out to support. I mentioned the website capelandclean.org. Um, we had two college signings for um, for the spring season. Caroline Kruger will be going to Sacred Heart University on, uh, for softball, and Buddy Kennedy who will be going to North Carolina. Um, for baseball, and if you haven't heard, I think SNJ today just did something on Buddy, and we're actually hoping that Buddy's not going to North Carolina, believe it or not, because uh, Buddy is a major prospect for Major League Baseball, and uh, we're hoping that uh, when June comes around that he gets drafted, and I think SNJ today uh, sort of touted him as like the next Mike Trout, or the best the, the best baseball player to come through since Mike Trout. I think Buddy would like to play it. And have a good career as Buddy Kennedy. Um, but if he really come on out, and I'll tell you what, if, if things go well for that young man, you get to come out and watch our baseball team, you get to watch them for free now. <laughs> so come on out and support um, Cape Atlantic, CapeAtlanticLeague.org, and like I said, Twitter.com, just because I'm proud of our Twitter <laughs> channel. Uh, contact information, I'm sorry for the, the I was hoping it was going to be a little bigger, but this, the, this is the information that we have as far as our building principal, myself, our trainer. Um, please, any anytime, any we're we're willing to talk to our community. Um, we we have a great relationship with our community. Um, we always thank our Millville Soccer Association for letting us play soccer. Uh, our alumni games, our Millville Violin games, there we have a great relationship with our community. The Thunderbolt Club, which is a booster club for our, the Millville High School and Millville School District, they they uh, give out twenty. I think this year will be twenty four scholarships in the amount of five hundred dollars each. Um, I'm not going to take a guess. That's twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> I think that's about twelve grand, somewhere around there. But that's how much money they're giving out each year. And you know, they support us as far as end of the season banquets. Uh, but that's a that's a community run booster club that uh, the men and women support our programs and our kids, and we appreciate it. And we appreciate everything that our community does for us. Uh, we like to think that everything you know works together. It's cohesive. It's not just here's the community, here's the school district. It's both. We got to work together in order to be a success. So that's my piece for athletics. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the program. Before Dave steps off, are, are there any questions regarding athletics at this time? Okay. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we like to think of Henry and Dave as uh, two of the people that make sure that our kids have access uh, to things beyond the classroom because they're so important in order to helping them live a, a full life um, and experience all sorts of uh, wonderful things. Um, so uh, we asked Henry to come out and share all the exciting stuff that's going on with fine performing arts in the district. So Henry Hart, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Gentop. And it's kind of ironic because Dave and I talk all the time. So um, we're usually the ones that get caught playing chess and different things, maybe when we're not supposed to. But, um, but we work together very closely with a lot of different things. Um, I'd like to take a couple minutes. We have a lot of our staff here, so I just wanted to introduce them. Erica Zyers, our band director at Lakeside. I have Margaret Kiefer. She is our, well, she's technically the literacy coach for senior high, but she's our theater teacher and also directs our spring um, fall production or dessert theater production. David Laird is our band director at Holly Heights and Rick Avenue. Uh, Mike Saul is our choir director at Rick Avenue. Josino is our band director over Memorial, and Donna Terry uh, is in the back. She's our choir director at Holly Heights. And, uh, and then most of you know them because I've got a lot of band parents in the room too, so welcome to everybody. Um, what I wanted to do is we were kind of told this is going to be a public forum, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the offerings that we have in the district, whether they're curricular, extracurricular, talk to you about some of the community involvement pieces that we do. Um, as well as some acknowledgments and awards that have come through uh, our department. Um, so this is pretty much broken down in what all kids coming through the public schools would have as an option. Uh, the art and music for K-5, to all students have 40 minutes per week for one day a week. Uh, grade 6 and 7, all students go through a 30-day cycle. Um, they also have the opportunity to participate in band and choir at those grades. Um, art has a 30-day elective. There is no music elective for eighth grade right now. Uh, and then ninth grade through twelfth grade, there are 
uh, AB electives, there's semester electives that all the kids can sign up for. They're only required to take one art or music class in their entire uh, high school career, but we encourage them to take more. And some of them are probably taking more music and art classes than anything else at this point, so it's good to hear. Um, and then our theater, we don't have any courses in theater at the elementary and middle school. A lot of that is integrated into their music classes. And then, again, there's a couple semester electives that they're able to, to sign up for at the high school level. This does list all of the electives that we offer. So you can see at the, the elementary level, there's pretty much general music, chorus, band, and art. Um, and then once it gets in the 9 to 12, there's a lot of other options and opportunities for them. Uh, since I've been here, we've added a few of the courses. Uh, we didn't have a theater program before I started. We have two sections of theater now, theater one and two. So AP courses. So we now have an AP music theory course and an AP studio art course. Um, the ceramics curriculum has been added. We had no ceramics before. Um, and we didn't have a music appreciation. They called it an intro to music where kids kind of played instruments sort of here and there when they wanted to. So that's now a more formalized music appreciation. And the percussion ensemble is also new since I've been here. We have percussion ensemble. Okay, uh, we do have a host of extracurricular activities as well. Um, so at Lakeside, there's not much at all that goes on at the elementary just because of transportation issues and things like that. But at Lakeside, we do a spring musical, uh, scenery crew, Shades of Blue, which is an after school ensemble, um, and the jazz band. High school, they have, in addition to some of those, there's the Trash to Treasures Club, which is more of a recycling focus. They take trash and make art out of it. Uh, clay club, we work with ceramics and pottery. Our scenery crew preps all of our uh, musical and our fall productions. They do all the scenery behind them. Stage crew, they're all the guys running across the stage and girls running across the stage, clearing sets and making things happen on stage. Um, our magicals, another ensemble group. They meet Fridays at 3 or 2.30 in the afternoon, prime time for everybody to to be doing extracurricular activities. Um, we have marching band in our spring musical, and I probably forgot a couple in there too. Uh, but that's that's a snippet of some of the things that we offer for our students. Community relations. We are we try and get out into the community as much as possible. Uh, we've done annual performances for the Gowanus Women's Club, Chamber of Commerce, the Millville Elks, our Airfield Museum, the Millville Board of Education. Uh, we've begun having some of our performances at the Leavoy Theater. Uh, I have two elementary schools right now that do most of their concerts at the Leavoy, uh, which is another opportunity for those parents to see what's right in their backyard that they may not have otherwise had that ability to see. Um, we have two annual art exhibits that are held down at the Riverfront Renaissance Center for the Arts. Uh, we just had a reception this past Friday. And if you are, walk into the Patwick Gallery, for those of you that have been there, floor to ceiling all around is covered with artwork. So if you get an opportunity, that's going to be up there uh, up through April. And then we have our other multicultural month exhibit, which is going to go from April to May. And that exhibit is all the work of our students. So they can go into a professional gallery and see their work hanging up at a professional gallery. Uh, we've done portfolio review sessions. Uh, usually these are done in Philly where they have a bunch of art schools come out and they will analyze and assess a student's portfolio for art. And we were fortunate enough to bring a few of those into the Renaissance Center. And the kids had a free opportunity to have eight or nine different colleges and universities check out their portfolios and give them criticism on what uh, they may need to approve, what they should include more of. So those have been some excellent opportunities for our students. Until 50 bucks a person, we said come free. So. Our community relations. Um, we've done some projects with PAL and with Cumberland Players. Um, we do advertising with many of the Cumberland County businesses through our programs uh, for our spring musical, our jazz competitions, marching band shows. 
We have gotten professional development through Wheaton Arts and Cultural Center and also through Cole's Music. Holly Heights has hosted the Raiders Drum and Bugle Course, so we have a direct connection with something that kids can get involved in as seniors and beyond and, and go into that drum, drum and bugle core uh, route. We've had students that have participated in Rowan Prep, which is basically lessons from university professors on their instruments and the Rowan Youth Press Band. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw Joe out. Joe and Erica helped us bring the Olympic Conference Honors Bands to Millville, so we've done auditions and we've had a lot of success, probably 10 to 12 students per year that have made the uh, Olympic Conference Honors Band. Uh, and we've also hosted the regional jazz championships uh, at Lakeside for the past four or five years. Our accomplishments. Um, I've had to take a couple pages on some of the accomplishments, which I'm okay with, and I'll extend it to three next year if we need to. Our marching band has grown, and it's the largest it's been since the 1970s. We had 120 members on the field. Uh, when our band director started back in 2004, there were 17. So we've jumped from 17 members up until 120 members on the field this year. They also had the highest scores since the 1990s with 88.735. So not only do we have the numbers, we have the quality to make them competitive. Uh, for some of our other things, if we look at from 2008 to 2013, we had six students accepted into regional and state ensembles. From 2013 until now, we've had 55 high school students that have been accepted into regional and state ensembles, and that's for bands, jazz bands, and choir. Uh, we have three of our elementary schools are participating in an arts infusion grant, which is sponsored by the Geraldine Dodge Foundation and the Foundation for Educational Administration. Uh, they expanded it, so we will have all of our elementary schools participating this summer. Uh, and that's just to try and get the language arts teachers and our arts teachers working together to try and bring the whole curriculum along a little bit further. More accomplishments. Um, if we look at how many kids continue after here, we've had 13 students have gone into to major in music since 2003. I'm going to jump down a little bit. Five students from have gone into art since 2012, and we've had two of them which have received full scholarships to art schools to study art. Um, our senior high jazz ensemble last year were the 2016 Cavalcade of Bands New Jersey Regional Division Champions. Student whose mom is in the room, hey Julia, uh, <laughs> participated in the Carnegie Hall National Honors Band where she. Uh, played alongside of students uh, from all 50 states and seven different countries in an ensemble. We've had over 150 students that have participated in all South Jersey Elementary Honors Band and Choir. So um, again, we have we have accomplishments at every level. We're looking at K to five. We're looking at high school. We're looking at middle school. There's accomplishments happening. Um, a few years ago, we also started our first. Um, chapter of the National Triumph Music Honor Society. So we have a, had over 20 active, sorry, 20 active members every year, and that's also a program that continues to grow um, year by year. Some of our awards, uh, we've been recognized by the National Association for Music Merchants as the best community for music education for the past five years, and that's not just our district; that's Millville. Uh, there's data that goes into uh, talking about who you've worked in the community with and, and what types of relationships and involvement you have by parents and thing that we tell them, which is all true, I don't lie, uh, we have been recognized as the best community for music education for the past five years. Uh, for our drama program, the past two years we've won a first place national distinction from Cena Graphics. Uh, basically, they get pictures of the set and everything that we've done, and they award only a handful of those across the country. So we uh, we won first place for our set for Mary Poppins and for Family of the Opera. We also have received uh, two artists in residence grants from the Foundation of Educational Administration and Charlene Dodge Foundation, and they're currently taking place in Rick Avenue and Holly Heights. And usually, when they talk about those, this artists in residence grant usually run. 
you know, ten to twelve thousand dollars. So we've received two of those. And I know the speakers. I don't think are working on this, but I'll try and play this quick video. This is one of our artists in residence programs. Can you hear that a little bit? Okay. Um, so this is Josh Robinson, who is one of the artists in residence that we were fortunate to get, and he had all the kids design and build their own drums, and then from there he's doing a few of his lessons, uh, just teaching them different things. He's going over quesadilla and taco to get the kids meeting different rhythms. But all the kids have made their own bucket drum that they're going to be able to take with them after the uh, this artisan residency program is over. And we were able to get a lot of donations from Lowe's. Lowe's donated all the buckets um, and the duct tape. Right? Were you involved with that? Or some teachers brought in some duct tape. Yeah. So it was a whole community thing, and the school has had a lot of buy-in from um, for the presentation. Josh also did a presentation for the entire Rick Avenue faculty. And he said it was a great one of the teachers left saying it's the best in service she's had since they've been there. So I nudged the principal over there and said, see, we got her going. And uh, he gave me a dirty look in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, And then I just have my contact information. So if there's anything, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. A lot of you, I have a lot of parents in the room with their kids in the programs. So they could probably give you uh, some good. Uh, I don't want to say editorials, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, testimony, thank you. Testimony about what they and their children have been through and how it's helped them through their. So, so thank you. Before, before you go, would you mind just talking a little bit about the, the importance and the value um, that you feel having these programs uh, provides for, for our students? Just a little bit. I, you guys are awesome. And they, does a great job athletics and we always talk about athletics but you know, fine performing arts yeah, talk and, about how valuable it is and i think that you know i think there's a lot of tie in too and dave would probably agree with me on a lot of this sometimes the normal everyday language arts history science just doesn't do it for the kids but it's after school or they got a football game that night or they're playing basketball against violence, so they gotta be there. So they wouldn't even think about taking off from school because they know of what some of the extracurricular activities are there for them. Um, it's, there's studies out there all over the place that say the kids are involved or are gonna do better in your academic subjects. You can find that information anywhere. And one of the things I'd like to say is there's a lot of districts and schools around us that are trying to pull our kids that have none of this. They don't have art music programs. They don't have sports programs. So I think it, as a district, these are some areas that we really need to focus on and um, keep our attention to, because this is what's going to set us apart from a lot of those other programs. Appreciate it, Henry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if I can, I'll thank Henry, his staff, uh, Dave, and all of you guys for what you do for, for the kids in Mobile. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, what's next? What do we want to talk about tonight? I think we uh, can all agree that athletics, the fine arts, performing arts are essential parts of our, our district. Our kids get a lot out of it. I think um, it's important that we try to hold on and uh, keep fighting for those, uh, uh, those opportunities for our kids. Um, as far as the second part of tonight, I, we scheduled these forums a while back now. Um, just didn't want to lock us into any particular topic and just wanted to open it up. Uh, if there is anything that you would like to talk about, we can do so. Uh, if not, as you know, there is a board meeting later tonight at 7, so we'll get out of the way and clean this room up. But uh, we certainly still have some time, so I'll open it up. Kevin, no? Okay, Beth? Um, I think that the budget cuts may be a question or concern. Sure. All right, and we will. Um, talk more about this, I'm sure, at the board meeting. There'll be an opportunity for the board members uh, to also talk a little bit about their feelings. 
going back uh, to when I first got here in the district, um, we were receiving as a district flat funding. For those that don't know, and that's where I'll start, I'll, I'll act as though maybe whoever's listening doesn't know anything about school funding. For a district like Millville, uh, we operate about a hundred four million dollar uh, annual budget. Our budget is a little over hundred hundred million dollars. It's a big, it's a big number. Millville uh, taxpayers uh, supply about ten percent of that budget. So ten percent of hundred million dollars. We don't have to be mathematicians to know that's roughly ten million dollars. Uh, every year we raise the taxes uh, for the school part of it about two percent. That's an extra two hundred thousand dollars into the budget each year. The state and federal sources provide 90% of our budget. So over $90 million comes from the state, which we have no influence over or no control over. Um, so going back to when I first got here, we were receiving flat state aid, and that's what everybody in the state uh, are receiving. So each year, what flat state aid means to this district is approximately a $3 million shortfall just to make um, uh, salary increases, cost of doing business, utility increases, all of those things. So from one year to the next, money, but we don't stay flat. That's just not the way this organization works. Um, salaries, benefits uh, for the district make up about 76% of the total budget. So one of the largest pieces of the pie comes from salaries and benefits of our staff. Even with modest raises uh, across the board, there, there's, a, there's an increase in cost of doing business. Um, so from the time I got here, um, there had been talk of uh, possibly having to uh, close a school. It had been declining, uh, and there was certainly space in our other, other schools. We pro probably at the time, even seven years ago, could have done it. Um, that was something that I didn't want to I didn't want to see happen uh, to this district. So year in, year out for the last six cycles, uh, we have fought very hard to try to find alternatives um, to make up that $3 million shortfall. When you multiply 3 million times six, you start to see the problem, that there comes a point where you can tighten the belt so far, uh, and um, at some point you can't, you just can't find any more money to cut. Uh, not in the kinds of uh, shortfalls that we're talking about. When you're talking over $3 million, it starts to become difficult. You can't cut supply money only so far, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so unfortunately, uh, this year, the, the budget that is being presented to the board later tonight um, comes from a place of uh, last resort. Um, we have a budget that includes closing one of our elementary schools, as I'm sure you've heard. That'll be absorbing a little under 200 students, right around 200 students, into our other elementary schools where there is space. Um, that is how we're uh, making up the bulk of this year's shortfall. So, yes, not good. I guess I should have elaborated a little bit more. <laughs> Do you foresee budget cuts in these area sports and the fund on the list? Um, there have been small cuts. Um, made over the years in these areas. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do as the superintendent is say, here are all the students. This is all. Uh, I want them to have exposure to these types of things because they're good for kids. Right? So we had to either we had a choice. We either had to come up with a little over three million uh, by cutting programs and keeping a school open, but that would hurt all kids or maintain programs and try to keep class sizes relatively um, relatively manageable. As a former teacher, I'll tell you when you get to 25, relatively manageable becomes debatable. 25 is a lot of kids, but um, we wanted to keep, keep the programs intact. So by closing a, a school while painful and brought into the other schools and the economies of scale allow us to continue to provide these programs at least for one more year. Right? Um, but what I what the, the bigger thing I hope people take away um, we are closing a school or recommending closing a school in the budget. What happens next year? 
when and if the state budget is flat again. I don't see a good future financially. Um, and something has to give, and this is above uh, my, my title. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to solve these problems. These are governor problems. These are state of New Jersey problems. These are federal problems. Public education needs to be funded, right? And in a community like ours, where 10% of your budget comes from the local tax base, we're relying heavily on other sources, other taxes from the state, from other property owners paying to help subsidize uh, this area. Uh, and so the, the, um, the motivation or what we need to let the governor know and other people know is this community is worth subsidizing. It's worth increasing the state aid because this is a great place and we need to educate kids. So in communities where it's the flip and they're all over the state. You have 95% of the uh, budget coming from the local tax base. They rely very little on the state aid. If they need to keep a program, they raise their taxes to 4%. 2 or 4% on a larger number, obviously, you get more, you get more in revenue. That's the fiscal reality Millville is looking at. <clears throat> and there has been uh, court cases the Abbott, the Abbott uh, funding came from, from the notion that as a state, we need to pr protect and finance our poorest students. Um, and as you have seen, Governor Christie doesn't follow rules like court <laughs> cases and, and things. He kind of did what he wanted to do. He tried on two occasions to completely dismantle Abbott. So, yes, me. As the superintendent, how active are you about going to two state meetings and advocating for us? Very. Um, so much so that I think when they see me coming, they, they cringe a little bit because I've been very outspoken about, about these issues. Um, the problem, I guess, or the, the, the challenge is the state's financial situation isn't good. So they're they're saying we don't have any more money to give, and so it's really it's a very difficult um, topic that there don't seem to be any good answers. You have some uh, districts that have growing enrollment, and they're seeing flat A. Kingsway is an example. They're drastically underfunded. That's a problem. But basically, you know, when you look at public education and school districts like Millville, flat, right? Uh, but this push for charter schools, uh, I, and I'm okay with the existence of charter and choice. I think choice as a parent is, is something that's fine. It's okay. But I think they should have to have the same rules as us. So instead of getting an increase in their aid because they see a growing enrollment, they should remain flat. And that flat maybe could be a little bit bigger for everybody if they weren't getting more. But to, to back to your question, I do try to advocate a part of uh, the legislative committee for the state education committee. I, I, um, I'm up there at least once a month. And uh, I try to be a very vocal thorn in their side. Any other thoughts or questions on such a, it's not a great topic. Tell you, I haven't slept. It, it drives me. It drives me crazy because I don't. I don't want to hurt any part of our district. I, I love this district. I think every school does a great job. I think every um, every part of what we are uh, is worth trying to save. And, um, I just know when I when I look myself in the mirror, I know I've tried to do everything I can to not have nuclear options like we're at right now. It is, it is the reality. So cheery, I know. I'm so sorry. We should have stopped with Henry and, and uh, called it called it an evening. But um, I, I really do appreciate you guys coming out. This was our our first run at, at trying to do this forum. Uh, we'll get some feedback on maybe how the, the live feed went and if other people tuned in. Um, that would be great. Um, the next ones. 
coming. Uh, look for dates on that. I'd love to see you back and, and try to get better at this. Um, really want to try to serve the community in the best way that I can. Uh, that is something that is very important to me. We have amazing people. Um, if I ask you to raise your hand, most, most people in the room are staff. I mean, that's, that's what kind of awesome people you are. You've come to these kinds of things because you care about the community. We, we really want to try to reach out and bring some other people into this conversation uh, so that they can take ownership over the future of the, of the district because, again, going back to that final financial piece, uh, I don't know what's to come, but right now the forecast is not, is not great. So we need to get advocating more voices and, and just really try to uh, uh, hit home that we need help. Appreciate you coming. There are refreshments thanks to Vicki, my awesome uh, helper here. She, she's my right hand. She does everything. So please feel free to have some refreshments and uh, hang out. There'll be a meeting at 7 if you'd like to stay. I appreciate the time. Thank you.